Look out bags. What are they all about? Let's go inside and find out. Too cold out here. Oh, it is bloody cold out there. Right, bug out bags. What are they all about? Now why I'm talking about bug out bags today is uh, just so I happen to be packing uh, a lot of bug out bags for a, a family order. So a couple of adults and a few children. I thought I'd talk about the bug out bags what we sell here at the shop. Now, bug out bag, gold bag, grab bag, emergency kit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a bug out bag is a bag full of goodies you can grab at a moment's notice if you need to get out of Dodge. Now the bags themselves, they can come in different sizes. So you've got 24 hour, 48, 72, and even the never coming home bag, or inch bag, or whatever you want to call it, which is a larger bag where you intend on never coming back. So you've got all you need in there. But more often than not, a grab bag or a go bag, bug out bag, it's just a kit you can grab to see you through X amount of hours uh, if you have to vacate your home or a location. Now another name for a bug out bag is a get home bag. So it's the same concept. So you could be away from your home, work or whatever you're doing. And um, for whatever reason, the proverbial is hit the fan and you need to get home. And uh, all you got is your, your wits and your bag. Um, I've done this myself as a, as a trial run, 40 miles from home. Uh, with just this bag and a few contents, a 24 hour bag out bag contents. Um, yeah, 40 miles away from home. And over two days, I got back. If you want to check out that video, I'll put a link later on in this one. So yeah, bug out bags. Now you'll see loads of bug out bags on the market from different companies. And to be honest, a lot of the bags are just full of rubbish you don't need. So the essence of survival really is food, shelter and water. If you get them three things covered, you know, you should be okay. Like who, who needs an axe or a machete and or a gas mask in a bug out bag? What sort of situation are they leaving or what are they expected to go to um, if they need that sort of stuff? Yes, in an inch bag, you will need a bit more equipment for cutting firewood and whatever, but not in a 72, 48 hour, 24 hour bag. Plus a lot of these bags are selling, they're not fit for purpose. They're, they're a cheap bag that um, when you do want to use it, it's going to fall apart on you. And then you're walking around with a spa bag. So the bug out of this bag itself, it may be stuck under the stairs or in a cupboard or by the, the door and um, just there for emergencies. So you don't want to be loading it out with top of the range, high spec stuff that you, you never get to use, or hardly ever use. But then on the flip side, you don't want to be filling it with cheap junk or having cheap bags. When the time comes and you need to use it, it falls apart. Yeah, some of these other suppliers will try and sell you these kits and these bags, and they never used any of the equipment or gear themselves, because they're hoping that you will never have to use it as well. Now, personally, I use a lot of this stuff, and I don't want to be filling the bags or trying to sell stuff that, A, is, is a waste of time, useless, but don't need it, or two, that it will just fall apart when you do come to use it. So you want quality gear at a reasonable price. That's what we try to do here. So enough of that. Like I say, I'm packing all of that out for a family, a couple of adults and a few kids. Now I do kids bug out bags as well, as obviously the kids can't carry as much as adults. And the ones I'm, do I'm packing are the 24 hour bag. So I'll just show you what's inside and, and the thinking behind it. So a very bug out bag, go bag, grab bag. The first thing you want to think about is the bag itself, isn't it? So the bag, I've chosen to use for my kits is this Islander Recon 28. It's very hard wearing. It's a 600 denier fabric. The zips is one thing I look at, and these are really good zips. I've looked at other manufacturers, and the bags are okay, but the zips are rubbish. And uh, you pack them out of, with gear, and the zips are going to fail. So I always look for a good, strong material and good zips. Yes, there's better bags out there, more expensive ones, but do you really want to fork out for a a top of the range expensive bug out bag that you um, hopefully will never have to use. So this is the, the thinking behind this type of bag. It's robust, hard wearing, the zips and buckles are good and value for money. So the bag itself is 28 litre. It's got two large compartments, plus these expandable pockets on the front. It's got all the molly attachments, um, all the external straps. It's well padded, sternum strap, waist belt, all the whistles and bells. It comes in a range of colors, most popular ones for bug out bags are other green, blacks and greys, but I do the camera ones as well. So that's the bag, what's inside it? Well, like I said before, the three elements you're gonna really think about is food, shelter and water. So when it comes down to the food, all we pack in this 24 hour bag are the Seven Oceans Emergency Rations. 
So these ration biscuits, there's enough calories in here for one person for 72 hours. So there's more than enough here to keep you going for, for 24 hours, 48. Yeah, it's not called on blur food, and you might not enjoy it, but it'll keep you going. You can live on it. But it tastes like shit. So that's all you need for a 24 hours bug out survival situation. You could put more food in, your MREs, your freeze dried stuff. If you've got freeze dried stuff, then you've got to think about boiling water and rehydrating it. If you've got MREs, you can eat them cold, but you've got to think about cooking them, heating them up. So it's more equipment you've got to carry, is it? But with these, there's no cooking involved and there's less to carry, less weight to carry. In my opinion, I want to try and keep the weight down as, as, as much as possible. Better job all around, I reckon. You don't have to just survive on the biscuits, so there's still plenty of room in the bag for any personal choices of sweets, rations or treats. So that's your food in the bag. Water. Now when it comes to water, we stayed away from the water pouches you can buy. Um, don't really see the point of them. They're expensive what they are. You're better off just getting some small 500ml water bottles. Cheapest chips. Stick a couple of these in your bag. Keep these up the sunlight, they'll last for years and years. Plus you could always use the containers for refilling if you had to. Plus to go along with the water, Puri tabs or Aqua tabs. So there's 50 in the box. Each tablet will do one litre of water. Now you want something to drink out of, or perhaps collect the water. So we put a 58 pattern uh, water bottle and mug in with it. So fill the bottle up with water, put one tab in, give it a shake, 10 minutes later, yeah, it won't taste like champagne, but it'll be safe to drink. So that's your food and water sorted. The other thing is shelter. Now for shelter, we've gone through a lightweight uh, waterproof poncho, bungee cords times four, and some paracord. Now you can probably do away with the bungees if you wanted to just use the paracord, but the bungees are quick and easy. Four bungees, one on each corner of the poncho, Bob's your auntie Jim, you've got a, a shelter set up. Something we used to use in, when we was in the army, not only can you wear the poncho, keep you dry in the rain, put it over top of your bag as well. You can sit down and just put the poncho on and keep yourself dry. Take the poncho off, tie up the hood, like I say, four bungees on each corner, and you've got yourself a shelter. Now the poncho we chose is a, is a waterproof ripstop, lightweight poncho, light to carry, keeps the rain off. They've got eyelets in the corners for when you wanna string them up to make a shelter. Plus they've got poppers down the side so you could link two, maybe three ponchos together to make yourself a, a bigger shelter. Now again, there's more expensive ponchos on the market, plus there's tops, you can get three by threes, tops, DDs and all that, but you're gonna try and keep the cost down, the weight down. You're gonna think about, do you wanna spend huge amounts of money on top of the range equipment that uh, you'll very little often use or may never use, uh, just sitting in your bag out bag. So this is a good alternative, um, relatively inexpensive, lightweight, waterproof poncho stroke shelter. So there you are, that's the shelter. I've stayed under them ponchos many a times. No problem at all. Right, food done, water done, shelter done. Now you think that might be it, but now there's a few other items that we chuck in the bag as well. Those being a foil blanket and a survival bag. Again, both items are there just to protect yourselves against the elements, cold, wet, very lightweight, and they take up very little room. Windproof and waterproof matches. So you may not want to get a fire going, but if you do, it's far easier to use a match rather than rubbing two sticks together to get a fire going. So yeah, stick them in your bag. So another item that goes in a 24 hour bug out bag is a head torch. But no one likes wandering around in the dark, unless you're Nosferatu. So yeah, a good head torch is an essential part of your kit. Again, you could kit yourself out of an old light. Torch with the power of a million candles. Oh. Or um, expensive head, head lamps. But uh, yeah, you don't need it. Just a good light. Lightweight head torch, that's all you need. Now what about knives, I can hear you saying, what about all your knives and your, and your, your cool equipment? Yeah, all right, calm down, we do put a knife in. But just a, an inexpensive folding knife. That's got that knife. Just for a little task really, cutting your paracord or whatever. More often than not, people have got their own expensive knives or their own personal knife they like to carry. This is just an inexpensive knife, just to keep in the bag for any uh, task needed. We also put in a, a multi-tool. Again, it's not, Top of the range, Leatherman. You know, why would you want to spend 50, 80, 100 pounds on a Leatherman when an inexpensive 14 tool in one, the multi tool will do? Like I say, this is a bug out bag situation. The bag is packed, ready to go, and hopefully, touch wood, you're never in that situation where you need to use it. But if you do, the kit is good enough and it's here ready to go. Now you're bugged out, you're in a, you made your shelter, you got your knife out and you might cut yourself. So what you need? Personal first aid kit. Again, it's not the paramedics backpack all in one. It's just a basic first aid kit. Plasters, couple of bandages, couple of wipes. 
So it's just something there in case you get any nicks or cuts uh, when you're out and about. Now like I said before, there's plenty of room in the bag. If you wanted to add it to it, you know, a fire kit, a, a more extensive first aid kit, a bit more equipment, there's loads of room in the bag for that sort of stuff. Now that's everything we supply for the 24 hour kit. But like I say, there's more room in the bag um, for any personal items, gets most gadgets, power banks or whatever. And you also got to think about time of the year. So in this time of the year, where it's, it's cold, you want to pack some warm socks, a warm top, clothing, hat and gloves. So this is why we left the bag with plenty of room for them sort of options. Now when I went out and about, uh, testing this bag out, um, walking 40 miles from uh, a location, there's also enough room in the bag for a small sleeping bag. But that's a personal item you can choose to put in there if you wanted. So if you are thinking about getting a bug out bag, what's your plan of action? Uh, how long are you going to go for? Where are you going to go? And what you going to do when you get there? So once you've got your plan of action and what you're going to do, you know what sort of kit you need. I love it when a plan comes together. So that's it guys. That's the 24 hour bag done and dusted. Now the 48, the 72. Obviously that'll have a little bit more contents in it. We've got more food in it, MREs, um, drink rations, snacks, that sort of stuff. Um, more shelter equipment. So depending on how long you're staying out for, so there's obviously more food and equipment to keep you going that, that extended period of time. And also with the 4872 um, hour bags, we, we up the size of the bag obviously to carry the extra gear and food. So not just the bug out bags, we also do ETC kits as well. So an ETC kit is an everyday carry. So a few items you're carrying on a pouch or on your person. Worst case scenario, you have to ditch your bag or you got stolen or whatever, or you found yourself without it. You've got a few bits and bobs on you that could see you through as well. So yeah, tie them in together with your bug out bag. You should be able to take on the world, even if it falls apart. So I'm gonna pack these up now for this family. Like I say, we do do kids bug out bags as well. So check them out on the website. Now, if you did wanna watch my videos on when I walked 40 miles with my bug out bag uh, to get home, check these videos out, part one and two. And um, yeah, that's it guys. I'll catch you next time. All the best. Cheerio. It's over.